gate here. The thing about both of those champions which is really good carrying them into late game is both Tristana and Kog'Maw are, are relatively inexpensive champions to do a lot of damage with. Yeah, you have kind of free steroids on both sides. Kog'Maw, I think, a little bit um, free-er because he gets kind of damage that he won't scale himself right. uh, with, with, that, with that W there. Whereas Tristana actually has some innate burst damage in lane. She actually can be a very aggressive laner. Um, and then has free attack. And mid, thank you. And Scott Jake's taking a lot of damage there. Oh, he's getting really, really low. Dyrus still charging through. Taking a lot of damage, but it could fall to the Hemo Plague. Very, very oh! low. Will really get picked up there just barely. Looks like one for one. And uh, my map awareness has grown by playing at land because you guys yell lanes for me. I'm sorry for missing <laughs> out at the beginning, but seriously, thank you guys. You guys are really, really awesome. Um, uh, there we go. Okay, I'm still crushing these minions. Odd one's still kind of growing his minion lead. You can see now two above 100 minions. Uh, Galio and Kog'Maw both hitting the 110 mark. And the best that V8 actually has is the 96 on their Trist. So still a mid growing their gold lead, and they're going to keep doing so, I think. Yeah, we can see if you switch over to the, uh, the change purse and see how much gold they have. We actually have three members over 4,000 gold and none on V8 side right now. So uh, TSM is really bringing in the gold around the team instead of just one person getting fed. They're doing a great job at comping during their fights, allowing the assists to happen and the kills to happen for the right people. Yeah, let's see. You have Takashi just still pushing through mid. The V8 really haven't been making any big moves. They've been kind of content to farm and then wait till late game. That actually might be their strategy. Say, look, we know we can win late game. We know our comp uh, works a certain way. And honestly, Maokai is probably one of the best late game junglers in the game. Having an AoE 20% damage reduction, like as soon as Galio ults, you're just like, okay, we'll ult on top of you. Don't care. And you absorb kind of everything and you kind of, you kind of turn it back to their faces. So um, I think V8 wants to just to kind of stall this one out. They're kind of playing a CLG sort of game where, uh, you know, regardless of the enemy strategy, they just want to hold on, win their lanes, farm up some gold and then make it happen by the 50 minute mark. And CLG, they 2 out against all authority by doing that. We'll see if V8 can make that same thing happen. And right now you just kind of see Goblin, you know, taking all his buffs away. He's gonna try to invade again when, when the other buffs keep respawning, when Dragon comes back up. They're gonna keep trying for that. I don't know time. if Kaox, maybe he was looking for uh, a little bit more slow on Voidus, a little bit more burst damage as he was getting his ultimate out, but usually you'll see Kogma go for that Q level and the passive attack speed next. But he is leveling his E after the W, so that's a little bit different there. And doing great damage, though, coming out with some crits and uh, going to back off. That's the thing about Kogma is you're getting hit by two things at once. He's got his W, which becomes stronger, and that's just the auto attack. And then his ult is falling on you as you're trying to get away. So he can pretty much direct what range he wants you to go in. See Kennen milling about here in a ward, actually. Janna coming up. Looks like they're going to throw it down. Could have a dragon soon here. Let's see if these teams start to converge on that area. Oh wow, Kagma doing so much damage to Aphromoo. He's got, oh my gosh, more crits coming out. He was one hit from Dad after that if he crit again. He's got a lot of crit chance. He's going for that fast Phantom Dancer to scale the attack speed up. Trismil has actually taken mid over now. Sakashi coming back. They both now have the role of the Ancients. So a lot of spell vamp and free AP for both these champions. Reginald with blue buff, just spamming, spamming, spamming. Has not really given up minions much at all. And Pog actually going for some turret damage now. Kaox doing a great job there. But he's going to run out of minions. He's going to take some damage from this turret. He has a little bit of life still, so we'll be okay. So, V8, the under, uh, they understand what's going on. They're like, guys, we need to group a little bit more here. We can see that Trist already came mid. She is going to have to back, though. She was very low. But TSM now has a lot of aggression. They can focus it anywhere they want. They have a lot of power. Just trying to get a slowdown on Galio. Muff and Cutie trying to harass there. And they are going to push him off just due to no minions. But if they still had a wave there, I'm pretty sure they would not have mined uh, that 3v3 fight. Oh, they might cut. Okay, and Sopo's going to find the other one in the jungle. He's not going to jump in. Didn't know if the rest of the team was there. Looks like the Lizard has come out. Kax did get that bottom turret by himself. So excellent play there on that Cogwell. And now they're just going to jump in. They've actually pink boarded their own brush because they assumed Solo would have boarded it. They've been invading so very much. There's 125 gold spent by V8 just from the earlier aggression from TSM. So, I, I, you know, Solo really kind of been mind gaming him ultimately. Trying to look at these Togma and Triss builds. Kogna doesn't have too much damage, but that Doran's Blade is really what's winning in these extra fights with that HP. Takashi in middle still trying to farm against Reginald. That's going 158 to 105. So Reginald taking a 53 creep lead in mid, doing a very nice job, as well as been roaming and getting kills. So these guys have a great advantage for themselves. V8, like, uh, like they seem to be doing now, really need to get a group up for that five fight. I think, as you said, Unstoppable, that Maokai all the 20% reduction in damage is really going to assist them in continuing that fight. It's going to be a long one. I don't think anybody's going to be bursted down. That Olaf's going to be able to focus one person with Kogma, but there's going to be some time for V8 to come out and do some of their own damage in the next fight. And you can see uh, Triascomo is still a level behind on uh, Dyrus right here, but he's pretty close to level. You can see the experience bar in orange. 
right down there. Dyer's coming in from the back. Be a little bit of damage there. Nice trade off coming on both sides. Uh, looks like Eski's actually going for uh, Riley's next. He's got the uh, the belt of giant strength, so he's gonna be building for tankiness as soon as possible. Looks like some movements towards bottom. V8 wants to try to catch Solo mid down here. They might be able to do so. Oh no, they're actually going for their own blue. Wards on both sides here. Good damage from Galio, hitting unstoppable. And oh, Dyer's made the move first before Tree Eskimo, so. Uh, numbers advantage right now in the mid and bot lanes for Team Solo mid. They don't press too much into that. A little bit of damage to the turret, and now they've got complete position over this golem. That is going to go to Reginald. Reginald got the blue up. Good steal there by Solo mid. They're going to figure that out. Respawning at 2355, and because they killed it, they know that time. That was on purpose by Solo mid. They wanted that to respawn under their own thumbs. They knew when that would come back up. They have to be very careful about their positioning here. They have a lot of slows and he is going to grab it right in front of the turret. Cannon gets melted down. Unstoppable trying to get away, but Hemo Plague will cause them to just back off. That Vladimir ultimate will get uh, cast on you and the more damage he does, it's going to hurt even more. So if he can continuously do damage whenever you get that Vladim Vladimir ult on, he can, uh, he's pretty much going to take you out. That's why everybody wanted to get out of there. They didn't want to get Tides of Blood either. There's going to be a lot of damage coming in from Chris. Yeah. See what they can do in this mid. Kashi did go down in that fight. He was quickly focused. Wasn't able to get the uh, the W off onto Galio's ultimate as he was stuck in it himself. And that mid turret almost going down by the weight of Dyrus as he's coming down on it pretty hard after that last fight we saw in the bottom right half of the jungle. Odd one pushing bottom. It's kind of just pushing every lane right now. TSM with full dominance of the map. Good wards, however, by V8. They're continuously staying in that mindset. They can still win this game. It's all about one good Baron fight and then another roll on that one to get a few fights in your favor. We'll have to see if they can produce that. Cannon in mid, take a little bit of poke damage, and they're going to lose this second turret. Mm -hmm. So a couple of more build call outs, especially actually maxing Howling Gale uh, instead of Zephyr. Of course, maxed uh, Eye of the Storm first. Uh, KX still, in fact, putting his, all his second points in a Void Ooze. Reginald actually splitting points between Bulwark and, and Righteous Gus, but of course has max Resolute Smite. Uh, odd one actually maxing uh, twin, uh, twin, twin bite. Okay, I was gonna say twin thing. That's something else. Um, that, that's uh, Cassiopeia, yeah. But uh, burn out first, and then there's the points into twin bite. Dyrus again has maxed out reckless swing second, so leaving vicious strikes at one. Over in Muffin Cutie, he's actually maxing out glitter lance, then help picks one point in whimsy. Stop Alex actually was maxing sapling first. Now the odd one actually maxes arcane smash first, um, but he's actually doing that one second and sapling uh, right away. Takashi Q and W there. And just leaving that charge at one. Tree Eskimo, of course, going for E second. And everyone maxes Transfusion. And then finally onto Aphromoom. Uh, two points in Rocket Jump, one in Explosive Shot, then maxing Rapid Fire, then back to Rocket Jump. So those are the builds. And of course, you can see the items at the very bottom of the screen. And I think we got everyone at that point. So how to play like pros? Listen in, look at the bottom. <laughs> looks like nobody wearing buffs around the map right now. Galio does have a blue, and it looks like theirs may be up. So Reginald, I believe, could have stolen that the last time they were there. It looks like the jungle has been denied on V8 side, so they're not bringing any buffs to this next fight. Good shield onto Galio as it took a little bit there from Lulu. Muffin Cutie still always trying to harass, even though he's absolutely adorable and turns people into cupcakes. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. They do have that Oracle, so they have, uh, after the CV runs out, they have the advantage of that area, but they are going to choose not to do it. It looks like Reginald's blue may be wearing off soon, as it just did, and he's going to grab that new one. Okay, so let's see. Actually, one thing that's interesting is Muffin uh, did not grab Flash. They actually went Exhaust Clairvoyance, and then it still has not actually died, though. So, you know, despite, you know, having no super hardcore natural escapes and all that, and not wanting an escape summoner either, uh, just bring the actual utility with exhaust, and it's, it's actually going fine for her, so that's actually pretty much props to Muffin for surviving all that. Has two gold pretends out, that's helping bridge the gold gap a little bit, but it's still six and a half thousand gold the difference here. So limit have been growing a, a lead for themselves. Looks like they're congregating down by the dragon area, even though it just went down, but it looks like as they're ward clearing, they kind of want to counter that. It doesn't seem like they're going to be able to do too much, so now that little uh, annoyance of having your wards taken out every time you place them down, and with the vision that uh, TSM has right now, we're going to see a lot of those wards as soon as they go down. So it's going to be hard for V8 to keep vision on this. It's a good thing they grab CV. It's going to be very big for them. Oh, okay, that's having red as well, and that's a really good position by Solo Mid. They all went into the jungle. You can see them all sitting in the brush, waiting around, zoning out V8. They've been sweeping these wards uh, very, very well by the odd one, and so they got that free red buff. I think they're going to use this to start I mean, maybe they'll just keep playing the map control game and sort of slow building an advantage, or they might push in and do some really good pressure. There's Dragon, and they are going to start milling about towards that area. Let's see if 
five members of V8 just above that bush. That ward is there for them, but they don't have any more vision as they head towards Dragon. They do have Kog'Maw's W. And no, no, they did go Wriggles on Shyvana, so she's going to be able to proc that as well. The Galio all flash into Kennen. Kennen gets pushed into the fight there, and we're going to have to see if Takashi going down by Ignite, and he does. Olaf acts out of the side, takes him down. Tree Eskimo the focus. Dyrus with a double kill in the fight. Can he stay alive? That, that Hex Trigger keeping him alive. Triple kill, and he finally goes down by the hands of Tristana. Very good job as these guys continue the fight and continue to push them out. Four for one there. Five, no, five for two. And they're gonna go for the full ace. Five for two, actually, as Janet did fall, and Dyrus fell after getting a triple kill. Yeah, after we finally cleaned up, cleaned up that fight at the very end right there, went uh, three to, is now three to one overall. He's getting some nice gold, but of course, Solo Mid just really scaling up this game now. 10,000 gold in the lead, and they're really getting themselves into a nice place here. Kayax pushing down. Let's see if they're actually gonna, no, he's not gonna give Kayax the blue buff, even though Reginald had one already. He just wants to refresh that timer there. And wow, okay, it's going to be a very, very scary Kog'Maw. 18, almost 1,900 gold waiting in the bank. After that, and some items, possibly. Will he sell Adorans? Will he just wait? Looks like he's going to actually just wait. So that's actually, actually interesting. Um, a lot of these players will not sell Adorans to buy uh, bigger items because they can just wait and combine later. Um, it's kind of a, a choice thing that you can, you can kind of get that 230 gold in that slot. But then you lose that Doran's Blade forever, and you might want to keep it out for that 10 damage, that 100 life later on in the game. So yeah, right. You when you leave the choices. fight and you have 50 health, you're like, yeah. good thing I kept that. Yeah, good thing I kept the Doran's blade. Like, <laughs> sometimes it matters. So, I don't know, it's always interesting to me. Unstoppable putting a sapling down on Baron. Ward control is there. And there we go, V8 putting a ward down for real this time. But look at Solomon's ward control. Look how much map vision they have. They have, like, everything coming out of the river. Like, they have, they have three wards on the same screen. That's how much map control they have. They just really want to know what's going on. V8, oh, they don't, they don't, they don't see very much. That, just got, that got swept out. They saw Shivana kill their ward. That's pretty much all they got, though. So, I mean, you know, I do like the players of V8. I just, they're not. <laughs> you guys are cheering for TSM, obviously. Um, I, seriously, that's so much bias. Like, you realize that, right? Um, but it, like, I'm getting caught up in it almost. I'm like, well, I guess I'll cheer for Soul Mickey's. You guys want it. Like, I'm being like shy. I'm getting, I'm getting like peer pressure into cheering for him now. Um, but, you know, I, I want to see V8 pull it out. If they can't win this game, I do want to see him pull it to a game three at the very least. You see Chikashi X kind of running back away from Olaf, being very manly, honestly. He's got a lot of health, 27 and a half hundred health. He's going back towards the Metastopal X, clearing out these minions pretty quickly. There's one a guy left. Focus by TSM yeah. up towards uh, Baron. It looks like they're trying to waste these CVs. Kayox just hanging out, really doesn't have anything to do. I don't know, maybe he's cutting his nails. <laughs> we got Tree Eskimo trying to farm the golem. So right now, VA is struck for resources. They are really just trying to get more creeps. They're trying to do what they can. As soon as those waves get pushed in and they kill that, those maybe one or two waves, they're going to stack up. They have to wait the entire time again. And if uh, TSM decides to just freeze these lanes and let them push in their favor, there's going to be no creeps for VA to farm. So TSM is going to be able to just push down mid lane. Now something that they should do is, I don't know, they're, they're trying to force a Baron or something. They're not really attacking until they have the right engagement. 